we have um, an interview, a, a talk at Stanford University. Um, Stanford being the house of the quote unquote internet observatory, uh, which was heavily involved in uh, censorship during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, Ex-Google CEO Eric Schmidt says Ukraine war turned him into an arms dealer. So this interview was from April. This, this talk was from April. Yeah, <laughs> quite. This talk this was from April. It was posted. Yeah, it was posted just a few days ago. Uh, it apparently went viral. I missed it while it went viral. Uh, mm. And it's since been deleted. So there's a lot here. Um, and we're going to get through some of it, but we're also going to get through some background about Eric Schmidt. Go, go, Absolutely. Say what you got to say. What do you got? Well, no, 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 not, no, no, not very, not very much. I just think that like the, the, again, it's just like, it, it, it's, it's quite extraordinary the extent to which this stuff is just openly advertised. Um, like the, uh, the corruption, the, the fact that like a large number of tech firms and and um uh, and, and uh, have become uh, yeah effective arms dealers um as a result of providing um uh and well, like tech professionals like as a result of providing support to the pentagon and the cia while they're committing genocide in gaza um and also while they're you know keeping this infernal proximal quagmire go like going on um and i think that the the fact again the that he like just came out with the, these statements like so openly it speaks to the totally psychopathic world that they operate in it's like they didn't yeah. know there would be blowback from this yeah they didn't realize by being honest so i'm, I'm just going to read from the article at a lecture sure. at Stanford University in April, Schmidt said he is working on a company with Udacity CEO Sebastian Thrun that will, quote, use AI in complicated, powerful ways for these essentially robotic wars. The lecture, which Stanford posted on its YouTube channel last week, quickly went viral. It has since been taken down. The startup called White Stork is working to mass produce drones that could use AI to identify targets. Schmidt previously chaired the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence for several years. He was Google CEO from 2001 to 2011. So Schmidt was really like Obama's top guy, Obama being the droner in chief, his, his top guy mm -hmm. in the tech world. Um, he was heavily involved in uh, Obama's 2012 uh, re-election and partially credited for uh, turning that into a landslide victory for mm. Obama. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, this article calls him uh, Obama's chief corporate ally. It's from the Tech Transparency Project. And it details basically how Eric Schmidt and Google employees, I mean, right here, the US president, uh, Eric Schmidt has enjoyed virtual open door access to the White House during the Obama administration record show meeting with the U.S. president and top White House officials on at least 18 separate occasions from 2009 to 2015, not counting large meetings and social events like state dinners. So what this article goes through, and I would encourage people to read it, is um, partially this FTC, Federal Trade Commission investigation, antitrust investigation into Google. It would have been a landmark and potentially one of the largest uh, antitrust suits ever. Um, it was quietly killed. Uh, basically, the FTC voted that um, Google had committed antitrust violations, crimes, um, and and these basically went nowhere um, after a, quote, flurry of meetings in December 2011 that took place between top Google executives and White House officials on the one hand, followed by meetings between White House officials and the FTC chairman. So and Eric Schmidt, you know, a major Obama supporter, was uh, was was involved in meetings around the time that the FTC decided to kill this investigation. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Google is is one of the biggest companies in the world, um, and it has been allowed to become that way through breaking antitrust mm -hmm. laws and through working hand in glove with with the White House. Um, yeah, I might add as well, there was like a few years back, it's been rather memory hold now, but there was this um, 
uh, there was this campaign that was set up. It might have been one of Google's competitors, so they obviously had like some commercial interest in this. But I mean, quite reasonably actually, because they documented how Google um, funded this vast network of academics and like experts who would produce paper, like academic papers would write specialist reports um or would just simply do like write like articles for like wired on how well um yes it's monopoly as google's monopoly but this is a good thing and yeah. like this funding every single time the ftc was looking at um it, or talking uh about breaking up google or antitrust laws or monopolies or or whatnot um then suddenly all the money money would start surging i mean given that like google has more cash at its disposal, disposal than a lot of countries, um, it is very, this position is very easily bought. Um, I might add, it's, it, it's inter it's in, uh, maybe it's because they're, they're, they are very different things, but it is interesting that Google has managed to maintain um, this monopoly uh, while Meta, just by sheer token of people rejecting the platform, is collapsing at a rate of knots. Yeah. Um, you know, both in terms of its, its so in terms of its users, in terms of its share price, in terms of its perceived value, um, but people seem stuck on Google uh, because there are actually no real decent mainstream competitors at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, they do so much more than just the search engine. But um, mm. I, I just want to—I'm not going to pull up the article, but I want to read a quote from uh, the Hill, and this is based on a re reporting from Campaign for Accountability in the Intercept. Google and its affiliates have had at least 427 meetings at the White House during President Obama's tenure. The data gleaned from White House meeting logs showed that in all, 169 Google employees have met in the White House with 182 governmental officials. Uh, not surprisingly, Google's head of public policy, Johanna Shelton, has had the most White House meetings of any Google employee with 128. Um, so, I mean, basically, yeah, as, as uh, Lo Ming in our comments says, technocracy. It's it's uh, it's it's actually by some definitions fascism. It's you know the corporate and mm -hmm. the the merging of the corporate and the uh, government. Um, got to so, get all got to get all the pedophiles in there somewhere as well. Right, right. Technophiliacracy. <laughs> We'll, or something we'll, like that. we'll use AI <laughs> to identify them. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But it's also as well is that like I think this is a point to make about AI is that yes, um, there are very strong grounds to be frightened of it, particularly when you are getting into military applications. Um, I mean, like yeah, I can imagine that if they're talking about potentially mass producing drones that could use it, that could use AI to identify targets, they've already done it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really worrying, particularly when you think about like crowd dispersal at like a protest or something. Um, and, oh, yeah. But at the, at the same at the same time, um, it's important to note that the, the, the people who are making the most noise uh, about how scary and game changing AI are are often major AI investors themselves. We should tell you uh, something about like how this is this is also a marketing ploy. Oh yeah, because like by talking up, um, by talking up AI is like somehow invincible, objective, uh, somehow superior to human beings. Um, like that works really well in your marketing uh, brochures, and when you're trying to drum up money for from VC firms for investment and stuff. Um, I mean, like it, 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 it often experiments with AI are like really uh, have had lackluster results. Um, and also um, they have uh, uh, it, 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 often it requires like humans to one way or another ultimately be in control. So, I mean, Facebook makes a lot of, has talked a lot about how it invests in billion, millions in AI to root out, quote unquote, disinformation and like terrorist propaganda on Facebook. Um, it, this requires a huge team of people to go over the AI results because it does uncover, you know, an enormous amount of crap or stuff that's just not relevant. Um, so actually, it's just made more work for humans. This alleged, um, you know, uh, uh, groundbreaking technology um, in many cases. So it's it, it, it is something to be worried about. It's not something to be scared of. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mild optimism. 
Yeah, I, th I think a lot of it's overhyped. I wouldn't write it off entirely yet. Uh, I, oh, I no. think that the, oh, the, the rate of advancement is uh, is startling, um, to say the least. Uh, and, and, and but yeah, I, I think you're right that like you know people want to hype the dangers of AI. They present themselves as the uh, operators of responsible AI, and they get investments that way. So. Um, yes, that's that's quite clear. And that's a very great point you, you make, my friend. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.